Oh, look at how light that is. Oh, yeah. Today, we're gonna see how charcoal is made. I'm here in Picaris Pueblo in New Mexico, where I've been staying for the past two months-ish, waiting out this uh, whole virus situation. And I just learned that they have a, a small charcoal production uh, operation. And so I'm off to meet Luther with the forestry department and see how that all works. Hey there, how's it going? Good Loading up, huh? Mm-hmm. So this is what you'll burn in? Yeah. That's great. To make the charcoal? Yeah. We try to use a lot, utilize the small diameter stuff that yeah. people don't want to pay for for firewood. Yeah. And then some of the scrap um, lumber, kind of like the edge of the, the logs. Um, those ones will just chop up. Yeah. And so where are those coming from? There's, do you guys have a mill inside? Uh, we have lumber? a portable mill at the woodlot, I mean yep. at the fire station. And that's what these come from? Yeah. Oh, wow. We have a Lucas portable sawmill. Yeah. So. And so you sell that or sell the lumber that comes out of that? Yeah. It was just a way to utilize small diameter. Because yeah. normally we would leave it all in the woods. And then when they burn it. Yeah. Or broadcast burn for fuel reduction. Yeah. We would do it. But. So what's the process here? I see you guys are stacking it pretty tight. Yeah. Well, oven's four by four by eight. Holds a quart of wood. Yeah. So pretty much pack it as tight as we can get it. So that when we burn it, each the heat will transfer from one piece to the other to the other. And it'll burn through the whole yeah. the whole thing. And then you cover it up? Yeah. That's what that's what causes it not to just all burn off, right? Yeah. So we just need to fit on that. These gaps here. They don't take a genius to do it. It just takes a lot of labor. Yeah, it looks like you guys have been, been working hard to get it all, <laughs> all stacked in there. Yeah. Yeah. How long does it take you to fill this up? We have the wood right here, maybe like an hour. And we've been averaging maybe about 30 bags yeah. per, per, per burn. container. Yeah. Nobody likes to do it because it's labor intensive. Yeah. And then when you're unloading it, it's real dirty. Yeah. So my guys, even myself, I'll admit to it, I don't like I don't like doing <laughs> Not it. your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could understand that. Uh, we're trying to keep with the concept of 100% natural. Yeah. So the trees that we're cutting to get the wood, it's all coming from fuel reduction projects. You can see in here yeah. how it's real thick and stuff. So we'd go in there, um, create space in between the trees. And then where do you sell it? The, the charcoal, Sids in Taos, La Manta Nita Co-op in um, Albuquerque. Yeah. So selling to people for like the barbecues and stuff? Yeah, pretty much it's yeah. just been for barbecue. Been trying to get about a dollar a pound but that's been hard to get. Yeah. People don't want to buy it. So is that it? You've covered up now? No, we need to burn it first. Oh, I see. Right, when, yeah. when we burn it, you're going to get a lot of heat and flames. You won't be able to move this. Yeah, right. So again, stayed with 100% um, natural. We're using what we call pitch wood. Yeah. And it's sort of like a little petrified with the sap. And it gets real pitchy. That burns real well, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. So this stuff will start up real quick. So this is what we used to light it up with. Spanish people call it ocote. So we're not adding no gas, no chemicals. Yeah. No nothing to the. Yeah, so that doesn't get into your food when you're when you're barbecuing. Because I know uh, with propane, I can taste propane. Yeah. When I eat my steaks or. On a pro propane grill, I can yeah. taste the propane. Now we usually um, local um, contact our local um, house dispatch, the fire dispatch. Yeah. Because it's going to put out a lot of smoke, and people will get calls once they see smoke, <laughs> they start running. So that way, nobody nobody thinks there's a forest fire or yeah. something going on. Yeah. Hey Ryan, this is Luther calling from Pickeries. It's going good. I'm calling to let you know that we're going to be burning our charcoal ovens this evening. So just in case you get some reports of smoke here on the west, the east side of the Pickery's Pueblo, um, it's going to be our charcoal ovens. They'll burn throughout the night and then we'll shut them off tomorrow morning. So do you just light at one end there and yeah. it works its way back? Kind of the idea of like a cigarette. Yeah. You leave a cigarette there and it just kind of slowly burns all the way to the filter and then it dies out and then you're left with that string of um, ashes. 
And so the thinking is because the air is flowing in from this end, yeah. it'll pull the yeah. pull the fire into the rest of the container. We get a majority of our winds from southwest, so that's how we've lined these up. The uh, first idea was to turn these storage containers into ovens like this. And they were looking at maybe like about three tons of charcoal. And the idea is to, um, we have lumber in there, so while we're doing this, capturing the heat and smoke into, we're calling them preservation chambers. And in there you have green lumber. Yeah. So naturally when you have green lumber in there, you get them to a certain temperature, the pores open up, and then the smoke is allowed to penetrate to the lumber. So it's um, curing, yeah. curing it with a, without chemicals. Yeah. So you got you got air coming in this side and then you got a pipe out the other side? Yeah, you can see the hole in the end. Oh yeah, okay. So the, the pipe is yep. going underground. Yeah. And then it's going into that other uh, I got chamber. It. Yeah. yeah. And then that just all fills with smoke. Yeah. Wow, this is this fire's really uh going strong now. Yeah. It doesn't take long. Yeah, I'm amazed how quickly that starts just from those few pieces of uh yeah. of that pitch wood. And so how do you know when to cover it up? Um, sometimes you can go to the end and you'll feel the heat at yeah. the back side of the oven. Yeah. Um, and so that's what you mean when you know if it's burned all the way through. Yeah, we've kind of timed it maybe a good 12, 13 hours. Well, before you cover it? Um, well, since now. Yeah. So we started now at 5. Yeah. So tomorrow about 8 o'clock is when we'll just shut it down. And you'll cover it up then? Yeah. So you'll let it burn open for 12 no. hours? Oh, no, no, no. It's going to be covered. Oh, I see. When we shut it off, we'll just... Yeah cut the air off yeah yeah got it i just want to let this so we can cover oh, yeah. it and then we can go look okay it, it's almost ready to oh so just that little yeah wow as okay long as you get that heat that heat source oh i thought we'd be sitting here for hours no. <laughs> Pull it. So what's the goal now? You're just trying to seal up all the cracks? Yeah, make sure there's no air getting in. Yeah. Air, air control. Yeah. You have to control the air. Yeah. You get a hole here and you get air going there, then it's going to burn. Just too burns hot. out. Yeah. Burns too hot and turns everything to ashes. Yeah. So with the, with the dirt, we're sealing the edges. Yep. But at the same time, we're using the weight to push the, the lids down. Hold the lids down and seal. Yeah. yeah. It amazes me how quickly it turns from black smoke to, to white smoke. Yeah. I'll let it go for a while. And then later on, I'll adjust the vents a little bit and yeah. close them a little more yeah. so that we can we don't burn too hot. So then we'll pretty much just smoke all night. Yeah. And then it'll go. So now we can go look at the lumber. That's yeah, that sounds great. Result after a burn. Oh, yeah. Other pieces. Oh, look at how light that is. Oh, yeah. And so will you break this up much more before you bag yeah. it up? We try to get it to briquette size more yeah, or less. Okay. Yeah, okay. Because um, the bags we have only hold eight pounds. Yeah. We have larger bags, but we, the stores didn't have space to put large bags. Yeah, like I don't want to. 30 pound bags. Too big. Yeah, we, yeah, I could do up to about 45 pounds in a bag. Nice. And it usually shrinks about half. Try to oh, fill it up as much as you can. I see. Yeah, okay. All the pieces will shrink. Right, they just shrink down. Mm. Wow, that's surprising. I would have thought they'd be the same size, just lighter. Mm. Oh, yeah, wow. Look at that. So this is all the lumber that's been cut off of the our portable sawmill. Yeah. Nice. So just different sizes. Yeah. And, um... One thing we don't have running through here is water because we should be pumping um, cold water to create condensation. Yeah. Then with the heat, the cold water, it's going to turn your smoke into a liquid. Yeah. So then it'll drop on the log, the boards. And then being that they're still green and the pores open up, yeah. naturally it's going to want to suck in whatever moisture and yeah. stuff like that. So we're trying to get the smoke to penetrate 
through the boards. Yeah. But these ones aren't very, they didn't get much penetration. It's just because we don't have the water. Yeah. So it's not, there. not, it's too hot and too, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it's, just... it's still acting as a, a dry kiln. Yeah. So we're bringing in the heat and so they're drying. Yeah. And we're, I'm still sort of figuring out how to bond the boards and figure out how to, to make it work till they come out straight. Yeah. Because some of them you can tell when you, you don't bond them down, they warp. Yeah. They warp and they twist. Oh, well, I see, and you've got the packing straps in here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we cut the slits in the side. Yeah. So that we can run. Oh, the strap I see for the strapping. And then grab it. Yeah, and okay. And drag it to there. Yeah. And in between each layer, there should be a spacer. Yeah. Space like that. Yeah. Try to get air through yeah, all around it. the board and stuff. Idea yeah. is to fill these things up. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Then just alternate. Yeah. Because you want yeah. a certain amount of heat and smoke in yeah. them to start preserving them. For sure. But the next thing we need to do is run in the pipe, the water. We have problems with it. We couldn't get a container big enough to where you pump in cold water. Yeah. By, and within a few hours, the water coming back into the pump was heating the water. So the water <laughs> so you didn't going have cold in, water anymore. The water going in and coming out yeah. was the same. <laughs> yeah, got it. So yeah, that's a problem. We need to kind of figure that out. Yeah. And I see you've got these like jacks here on the outside. Yeah, we kind of had to rig it. Yeah. So we couldn't figure out how to. Yeah. To strap them and sure. how to get it to work. So again, I had Jordan make those for us. And yep. That's how we weld those up. Kind of. Improvise and yeah. figure out how to do it. Yeah. yeah, we haven't got down lower, so I'm pretty hopefully those boards are nice and straight. Now. Yeah, sure. Once once they're properly yeah. bound down there. So that's what we've been doing here. Awesome. I've been at it since um, O2. Yeah, nice. Making charcoal since O2. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we got a grant, oh, a nice. RTRL grant that was nice. to do fuel reduction, yeah. biomass utilization lumber production, preservation, yeah. and then the, the kicker to it was um, fungi yeah. restoration. Oh, nice. Right. You were telling me you were growing mushrooms as yeah. well. Yeah. So while they, those were the mushroom labs, yeah. but once that funding ran out, we tried to apply. We didn't, we didn't ever get it again. Yeah. So that part of the project went dormant. So then the hemp project came up, so they wanted to use those. Yeah. So. They just kind of took over them. Yeah, yeah. Started turning them into grow rooms. Yeah, yeah. But we still have the the knowledge of how to do it. And the idea with that was to go into the woods, collect fungi, um, figure out which ones are edibles, poisonous, and all this different stuff. Yeah. So we did find a um, Pleurotus oyster mushroom that grew out of the cottonwoods. Nice. And those ones are edible. I don't think anybody knew, yeah. but um, that one prefers cottonwood and it grows out of wood. So that one was the one we kind of leaned toward yeah. to grow. And uh, from what I gather, the, the governor's up for showing off the, the hemp operation as well. So mm -hmm. if you guys want to see a, uh, a commercial grow operation, uh, I guess uh, leave a comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think people will be interested. Yep. I'm interested. I want to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen it either. Yeah. Yeah. We've just been waiting for something to come up. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We don't, we don't yeah. see nothing about it. We're more yeah. into fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right, right, right. Are they growing over there right now? I think so. Yeah. They should be. Yeah, yeah. They should have starters yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is Gone. it people from the tribe that are running it? Um, yeah, there were before, yeah. but there's changeover yeah. and stuff. So yeah. Vaughn is kind of taking over. Oh, got it. Okay. He's the, he's the one that kind of I got fell it. into that, okay. that position. I knew he was working on growing things, but I thought it was in the fields, not in the, yeah, <laughs> in the grow houses. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice. Awesome. Well, I sure appreciate you guys showing off the operation here. Yeah, no problem. This is like, and, and have me out. This is, uh, this is quite cool. So we got Luther and I'm sorry, I, I forgot your name. Nate. Nate. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. I, I really appreciate it. No problem. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that this little adventure from uh, Picaris Pueblo here in New Mexico. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts, and uh, I'll see you again soon.